Welcome back to our channel, where we bring to life Japanese literature and folklore in English. Today, we are delving into a captivating short story by Yoshiwo Toyama, titled Toad. This story masterfully blends aspects of reality and mysticism, and presents us with a unique perspective on the contemplative relationship between man and nature. From around May, a large toad would appear around the porch of my house. It was always in the evening. It would not come out on windy or rainy days, days that strangely grew dim, or on evenings with a moon. It came out when the evening darkness was thick and dense, or when a fine rain was falling softly. It would creep along the hedge. It seemed so leisurely. It was quiet, and it was full of great strength. When dinner was a bit late, or when I didn't feel like going for a walk, I would lie down on the porch with a paper-wrapped cigarette in my mouth and watch the toad intently. My heart was calm. The toad was calm too. This went on for over an hour. Again? Yes, it's interesting. You should watch it for a while too. Such conversations often took place between my wife and me. But it wasn't particularly interesting. It was beyond interesting. The toad put its front legs forward with force. Then when it put its back legs forward, one of its front legs had already taken a step forward almost simultaneously. Supporting its heavy, thick body, which gave a strong impression of size, on four legs. It walked forward a few steps. Then it immediately sat down heavily and stopped. But it was more than just stillness. It was moving in the quiet. It was alive. When it opened its wide mouth, things around it were sucked in swiftly. Its bulging eyes remained fixed at one point. The spots on its back moved faintly as it breathed. My eyes too were fixed on the toad, unmoving. And I was breathing too. We were two separate entities, and yet we were also one. This went on for over 30 minutes. Of course, I had completely forgotten about time then. Why? For what purpose? That wasn't my problem. What to do? What will happen? That wasn't my problem either. No, anything with the word, what, in it wasn't a problem at all. In that case, I don't know either. I was just watching the toad intently. It was very settled. Then that happened. At that time, I was somewhat indignant. That's not to say I was angry. If being indignant is a bad thing, then my whole body was irritated and restless. I think it was due to atmospheric pressure. Atmospheric pressure strangely affects the atmosphere of a person's mind. One evening, I put the toad in a basin, turned upside down and put a large stone on top. The next morning, the toad was not in the basin. Here I insert a little extra story. In my country's countryside, there was a poor old man who was known as the toad grandfather. In my country, toads are commonly called wakudu. The old man caught river fish, received minor donations from villagers, and lived on. But his main income came from the wakudu. He caught toads from various places and sold them to an old medicine shop in town. In the yard of his straw house, there were several cages with fine wire nets. There were many toads in them. There was always a strange grunting sound. The air was damp and smelled of life. Women and children couldn't go there at all. He caught flies and sometimes earthworms and fed them to the toads. The toads caught from various places had to spend at least four or five days in that cage before being handed over to the town's medicine shop. During that time, their value was determined. Once, a group of young men from the village rushed to the Wakudu Grandpa's house. They said they had caught an extraordinarily large toad. They said it was about the size of a human head and its eyes were shining gold. But the young men's curiosity was not satisfied. The toad was no longer at the Wakudu Grandpa's house. He he he, that fellow is the spirit of God's storehouse mountain. We can't handle it. We let it go. So go and see. It might still be out there. The Wakudu Grandpa said that. His small eyes were peering out of his wrinkled, dark red face. But the strange thing was that no one had seen the large toad. When asked what it was like, the Wakudu grandpa only said it was big and gave no other answer. It was not clear where the rumor that it was about the size of a human head with golden eyes had come from. No one had seen it, and the Wakudu grandpa kept silent about it. It's now the village's mystery, a letter from my mother, who was in the country at the time, said. And it seems that the Wakudu grandpa is still catching toads as usual. I don't know why this story came to my mind. It's just that it was strangely in tune with my feelings. Anyway, I was strangely indignant at that time. I put the toad under the basin turned upside down and put a large stone on top. But that night, I was very settled. I slept well, 
and the next morning, there was no sign of the toad in the basin. There were no signs of the earth being dug up. Everything was as it had been the night before. Everything was as it had been told. From then on, the toad stopped appearing around the porch of my house. Even now, I often squat down on the porch and watch the area around the hedge for a long time. Of course, there is no toad there, but that's fine. And then I suddenly think about something like death. People die when they are indignant. I think the toad has disappeared. Everything is well harmonized, settled, quiet. Everything is beyond quiet and settled. Thank you for joining us on this journey through Japanese literature. Yoshiwo Toyama's Toad leads us with thought-provoking reflections about our own reactions to the world around us and the quiet yet profound interconnections between all beings. If you enjoyed this reading, please like this video and subscribe to our channel for more enriching explorations of Japanese stories. Until next time.